How cool would it be to take an old crappy 3D printer, take it apart and with just a few additional parts build a better one that prints great? Recycling a 3D printer? Let's do it! This is my first ever 3D printer. I used it to build the snake robot, the Death Matrix printer and a lot of other cool projects, my first projects that involved 3D printing. But for the last two or three years it was just standing in the corner collecting dust and I wasn't using it at all. I am not going to design it from scratch. That was a printer based on the Prusa i3 and I will stick to that. I will build it based on the original Prusa i3 by Joseph Prusa because this is a great 3D printer with a lot of features and it's open source. I'm not going to add all of those features obviously because that would require to replace like half of the parts. And the point of this video is to show you that actually old parts are still usable and you can create a really good printer with those old parts. I found on Thingiverse an assembly file of the Prusa i3 and that was really helpful, I will link it in the description. And I also created my own assembly file for the redesigned parts and just to make sure that everything fits together nicely. It wasn't really detailed but it was just good enough to make sure that printed parts will be okay and that frame is actually okay. After figuring out everything in CAD, or at least at this point I thought I figured out everything in CAD, it was closer to like 50% actually, but after that it was time to start milling the frame. Actually I wanted to use aluminum for that, 6mm aluminum, because on original Prusa i3 there is 6mm steel used actually for the frame, so I thought my aluminum should be good enough, I can machine that on indie mill, but it is terribly, terribly expensive, it would be more expensive than any other component of this printer, so I thought I will just use plywood, a bit thicker 10mm plywood and it should be good enough. I will machine it on the indie mill too, but firstly I have to cut it in half because this piece is too big to fit it on the table. And for that I will use a jigsaw. We will start by making this frame again. Unfortunately, I slightly messed up the manufacturing setup for this thing. Fortunately, I still have plywood left, um, just enough of plywood to machine this part again and the support uh, table, table support. I redesigned a few parts and everything else was pretty much the same as it is in original Prusa i3. Everything was printed on Ender 3 with Fibrology's blue PLA. There were some problems with wrapping and poor adhesion on some prints, but actually at this point I wasn't even sure if this project is going to work in the end, so I decided that it's good as for now. I can always replace those parts if I need to. And here I have all of the parts from an old printer and at the same time all of the parts for the new printer and some additional stuff like new 3D printed parts in really nice blue color and some black parts. I also have new hot end. So, old parts, new parts, 3D printed parts and the frame. That's everything I need for the assembly. So the first thing to do is to cut those aluminum profiles to a proper length. Cutting the aluminum profiles with that saw reminds me of how I built the Dremel CNC. The first edit of the assembly process was probably 5 minutes long and that's definitely not necessary to show you every single step uh, of that because it's not really that interesting for the most part. So here I want to just mention about the most important parts of the assembly process. I decided to go with 20x20mm 20 20 aluminum profiles because I have plenty of that left after breeding the Dremel CNC. On original Prusa i3 there is actually 30x30mm 30 aluminum profile and the construction is a lot more stiff than this thing so definitely this is not an improvement but actually I have plenty of that so 
it works for me. I also used all those screws from the previous printer just to recycle it even more and here I'm sorting that just to make it easier for the assembly. Most of the parts like the motor holders on the z-axis uh, were actually exactly the same as on Prusa i3. The construction and design of this thing it's really really nice, almost in every part you have a place for a nut so you are actually not screwing the screw into the plastic but through a nut and that's very very helpful. I also had to cut some rods because those were a little bit longer on the GJ Aurora 605S and I needed like 20mm shorter rods so I cut them with an angle grinder. And I used 3D printed holders for linear bearings instead of U-bolts. Pretty often I was using this battery powered Dremel like tool for sanding. There was a lot of sanding on the extruder because I used the same design as the Prusa i3 but I used different parts so I had to somehow make it work and as you can see here I made quite a big hole in the extruder just to fit the idler, the gear for the extruder and I used a bearing from old extruder assembly to press the filament. I am really, really tired right now. I spent probably 8, maybe even 10 hours on assembling this thing. And of course the assembly process is great and I enjoy it a lot. But at the same time figuring all this stuff out all the time, solving the problems and trying to get this thing to work with the parts that I already have from the old printer is not an easy task at all. But I'm doing my best and so far as you can see we have quite a lot of stuff already assembled and everything moves pretty smoothly. This part was extremely satisfying, finishing the extruder assembly. It was really tricky to get everything right right here, so attaching finally the fans was great and also the fans design, like the way those are placed on the extruder, is really cool in a way. Here actually I made a mistake and those cables should go through the back of the x-axis carriage and I fix that later. And because my power supply is a little bit different and it's also 12 volts, not 24 volts, I designed a box for that. So I quickly connected everything to the control board just for a test to see if it works fine. To finish everything I brought the printer back home to install the limit switches and continue working on the cable management and also print the enclosure for the control board that you can see right here. I am definitely not proud of this cable management, most of the cables are actually too long for this printer but I want to upgrade some stuff in the future so I prefer to keep them long as for now. It wasn't just about the assembly, it was mainly about problem solving and it was totally exhausting but I enjoyed it a lot. Before we will continue working on the printer, a quick message from the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. On Skillshare you get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community and all of those classes without any ads. Class that I recently watched and enjoyed a lot was Productivity for Creatives Build a System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank, who is also a YouTuber. Thomas talks about a lot of interesting things, not only about productivity itself, how to improve your workflow, workspace and be more efficient, but also about how to stay creative and come up with better ideas. He shares a lot of insights on his own process and suggests many methods that you can try on your own. If you are already a productivity master, you can polish your filmmaking skills or try graphic design, but my next class will most likely be about music. And the first 1000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring and now back to the printer. Before starting to print stuff, I had to obviously level the bed and a very important step, calibrate the extruder because I changed the gear. The easiest way to do that is to mark, for example, 10 cm on the filament, extrude 10 cm and check if your mark moved by 10 cm. If not, you can adjust steps per millimeter setting for the extruder. Once everything was calibrated, it was printing time. I noticed that I still have all the G-code files on the SD card and because not really a lot has changed on the printer, it should still work. So I tried printing the latest file and that happened to be 
a plate for my camera slider that I built about two years ago. Surprisingly, the first ever print on this printer was actually successful. Of course, there are some imperfections and those are mostly visible around the holes, but the outside surface is really good. I also printed brackets, I need those to attach something to Indie Mill. Those are sliced in Prusa Slicer, printed with PLA, basic settings, and once again, a nice looking, perfectly usable print, nothing to complain about. For previous prints, I was actually unwinding the filament myself because I had no spool holder for this printer, so I designed one for two spools because I think that's a really cool feature. To print it overnight, I used my Ender 3 as a spool holder for this printer. I wanted to mount it with the back plate and four screws, but actually it fits so well that it is not needed. I will put files for this thing on Thingiverse in case you want to print that, link is in the description. There is a direct extruder, so flexible filament should be easy to print, right? I printed the flexible piece for the foot of a printer and on the first try it was like close to a good print. Unfortunately, second and third try was a disaster. Probably I'm doing something wrong or still have to experiment more with the settings. Flexible filament wasn't really working as it should, but I still wanted to print this part, so I decided to try with PP. This is a material that I like a lot and I'm pretty often using it for my projects, for example, recently I designed and printed a minimalistic key holder. This is a perfect thing to print with PP and I will also give you a link to Thingiverse in the description. After printing those small test prints, I finally upgraded the glass bed to magnetic build plate and I cut it to the proper size with knife because it was a little bit too big and I sticked it with the tape that was already sticked to it. And then I thought I will print something bigger and I decided to print the master spool. I already have two master spools and I love this system. I need one more so I printed half of that on this printer. It took like 8, 9, maybe even 10 hours, I'm not really sure. And it was successful, it actually came out great. And here is just a quick test fit with the other spool that I already have. And it fits perfectly. How to conclude this video? There is nothing innovative or new, it's just a printer built with old parts. And that is exactly what I wanted to show you. Even four, five years old parts are still good and you can use them to create a 3D printer. You can buy a partially broken 3D printer, some parts, replace what doesn't work, make a new frame, and you have a really nice working machine. It may not only be cheaper, but it will also help the climate just a little bit because fixing is always better than throwing out. And the most important reason to why this is a good idea, because the building process is just so enjoyable, it's seriously so much fun. You have all the small components that combine together create a 3D printer or a machine or something completely different. And even more than that, it is just a great opportunity to learn about all the parts and how it works. Okay, that's it for my philosophical deliberations. Check out all the links in the description. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring, happy making and see you in the next video.